As we all know, the fire started early Saturday morning. I went down on my sea and tied up to the houseboat that turned the fire in. At 11.30 a.m. that morning, the three planes that were fighting the fire left the fire and headed west, not to return until the usual afternoon winds picked up at Squally Point, around 4 o'clock. The film and report did not seem to lay blame uh, to do with any of this fire, and my first question is, who made the call to stop the water bombers at 11.30 a.m. on Saturday, August 16th? These water bombers worked extremely hard. Uh, the video shows you, uh, I think it was three planes that came back at around 4 o'clock. The winds had really picked up, and of course they could not fight them uh, on the Kelowna side, uh, could not fight the fire on the Kelowna side. It was uh, really um, a, a tough job. Um, they were only able to fight on the Naramata side. And the winds continued to pick up over the night, but uh, the planes uh, did put on a pretty good show for all those people. Uh, these uh, videos were taken from Antlers Beach, uh, just down from Peachland, just south of Peachland, showing Squally Point on the far side. On uh, uh, Saturday night, uh, this, the, this video was taken from our house and it shows the um, fire jumping Wild Horse Canyon. Everyone should have realized at that time that when it could move over Wild Horse Canyon that quickly that we needed to, Kelowna really needed to worry because of the, the way the wind blows in the afternoon. I felt uh, at this time that it was really time to get very serious about the fire. The fire did then, after uh, Saturday night, all day Sunday, when these videos were taken, the fire had laid down on the northern flank. And so uh, they had about four helicopters working the fire uh, at this time. All day Sunday and all day uh, Monday till about four o'clock again in the afternoon, and then the tankers came in again on on um, Monday afternoon for the north side of the fire. But what really puzzled me was that the regional district has a fire rescue boat that has a pump on the front of it, and that could have been used all the way along here along the shoreline, uh, at least leaving a green strip all the way along the shoreline. Um, and you could fight the, the fire from the tail of the fire um, because it, it did sort of drag along the, the uh, shoreline. It was a, a shame that this boat wasn't used and I guess uh, my question again, my second question is why was this boat not used at the start of the fire to at least leave a green strip to help the erosion along this shoreline? These uh, videos were all taken on uh, Sunday. Uh, no one was fighting the fire on this side except for the four helicopters. And they were uh, doing a lot of work around an osprey nest. Uh, and I, I felt this was the time that the fire should have had about a thousand foot wide uh, strip taken right along it. Uh, at, at this time also, the two white houses had had no work done around them. And uh, they never did actually have any work done right around them uh, other than the uh, water bomber uh, or the, the retardant bomber uh, put some put some fire retardant uh, on the um, on the hillside above those houses. It's uh, a, a shame that this wasn't done because uh, it was a great opportunity to create some great guards at that point and do some backburns, but none were done. 
Every, long, every uh, logging contract in the bush is required to have firefighting equipment on hand, and these contractors have local knowledge and could have created some guards and done some backburning on those days. All the locals know that just about every afternoon in the summer, a good breeze comes up from Swallow Point headed for Kelowna. Just ask the unlimited hydroplane organizers about the wind that shut them down at 4.30 every afternoon. So why was there no large-scale logging done in the days that preceded the Thursday and Friday fires al al uh, along with back burning? Uh, this is taken around 4.30 on uh, Monday afternoon and uh, just across the lake and this is when the fire started to pick up which is too bad. It was, uh, it was lying low for those days and this is when it started to boil over again. Guys, Okanagan. Nice Okanagan sunset here. And then we come over to the Okanagan Mountain Park. And it is one nice fire. Lightning. You see it? You saw lightning? Could you turn the boat around so we can see a little easier? <laughs> anyway. Would you be happy to see that at your house, eh? Yeah. Please dump that red stuff. Dump it on my house. Except for the <laughs> nice no sort of backdrop still over there. Oh, in five, ten years. What? Look how black that smoke is, eh? But you couldn't see uh, a flare up like that yeah. anywhere near that thing. Yeah, that wind is getting them good. Do you still think it's contained? Ah, oh, they could contain that. They just gotta. I wonder how hot that is up there. Now, do you think you'll see that water go to that water bomber there? Obviously, nobody was reporting any. You think you can hear it crackle from here? I doubt it. Should be going down. There you go. Got it. Whoosh. Under oh. behind the trees. This um, was taken on um, Thursday afternoon from the Shannon Lake area. Now, they don't think any houses are being burnt yet. Wow. Look at the fire trucks coming in there now. Right there.
This is uh, Friday, just after the fire had gone through uh, past the vineyards and into Crawford Estates. And you'll, uh, was taken from the uh, Pritchard Drive area, looking across the lake. And uh, the wind really came up and did, uh, did the homes in. It's uh, too bad that was, I think that's uh, Cedar Creek Winery there. And then a little further on is that, that one's uh, Ross Fitzpatrick's uh, winery. And then into uh, Oakview and Shoot Lake Road. Um, pretty sad. Saturday, one week later, fire has moved right across. Finally, the Martin Mars uh, bomber was brought in. Uh, it's too bad that that wasn't used on Monday and uh, Sunday of the previous week. Uh, I felt that that was an ideal time to create the guards and do the back burns and do the water bombing on this side because the fire had gone down and we'd all seen how it had jumped Wild Horse Canyon the night before. And everyone knew that Kelowna was in trouble, but Again, someone made the call somewhere not to fight the fire aggressively in the park, and uh, that's the key issue. Here's a uh, Martin Mars uh, bomber loading. It takes about a minute, minute and 20 seconds to load. It's worth watching. 